UFC Vegas 22 full card weigh-in recap predictions and the updated betting odds. Starting with the first fight of the night, actually got canceled. Julia Stularenko versus Julia Avila. Fight is off. Disappointed that it's off. I thought it was going to be a pretty fun fight. Stolarenko passes out, ha collapses at the weigh-ins, so she's uh, medically unfit to fight. Fight to start off the night, JP buys versus Bruno Silva. I think this is a really exciting flyweight fight. JP buys on the rise. Bruno Silva, a, a tough guy, durable, a good test. This is a good first test for JP buys. I think he proves himself here, and I think he puts on a great performance. JP buys right now. As far as the betting odds go, he's a minus 137 favorite to Bruno Silva at the plus 127 underdog. I like buys in this matchup. He's a slight favorite, and I do think he gets it done. I just think he's uh, the, the superior fighter of the two. He's more athletic, he's younger, and he's on the rise. Next fight, Montel Jackson, Jesse Strader. Strader comes in looking good. So does Jackson here. This is a good matchup. But a bit of a level difference. Straighter, tough guy, a kid with potential. Not as much ex experience at all. Montel Jackson has been in there with some decent fighters. He's minus 645 favorite to Jesse Straighter at a plus 530. I like Jackson here, but I wouldn't bet on it. Because those are bad odds. Unless you're putting a ton of money down, I don't like it. Straighter, who knows? He could land something crazy. We've seen big dogs come in and win in the UFC, especially in their debuts. It, it could happen here, but unlikely riding a jackson win probably a decision maybe a tko but who knows but odds wise skip the bet on this one now the next fight roman delidze trevin giles i'm excited to see delidze you can tell he really thinned out though coming down to 185 that scares me a bit he doesn't look to have as much muscle mass as he used to have not saying muscle makes fights but if he was used to performing with the size that he had with the punching power with the grappling strength, how's he going to be at a lighter weight? We'll see at 185. I like him to win over Trevin Giles. Odds right now, minus 112. Trevin Giles, the plus 102 dog. I like the favorite. I like the Lidze. He's got a lot of upside and potential. Really good on the ground. Pretty good kickboxer. Knockout power. Um, and I think we've seen Giles in bad positions before. James Krause. Not saying that. Uh, Kraus isn't at the level of Delidze, but size difference, I think, could be a factor. And we know Delidze is nasty on the ground. I got Delidze winning this fight. I think probably decision, but could potentially land a submission or even a knockout. Because he's pretty versatile um, as far as his skill set goes. Now, for the odds here, as I mentioned, minus 112 to m plus 102. But I want to look at a prop bet on this one because there might be something... To consider, over two and a half rounds is a plus 112. I don't think the fight's under one and one round. Uh, one and a half, maybe, maybe. But less confident here. Um, I think that the fight going to decision is possible. You can't guarantee it because you have two you know, pretty good-sized men in there. High-level UFC caliber and Delidze also undefeated. That brings something into the fight. See if we can see a Delidze submission plus 395 decent odds if you really want to take a risk i'm personally not doing anything like that but if prop bets are your game those are some of their numbers now the next fight on the card grant dawson he takes on leandro santos santos or leonardo excuse me i always mess up his name and i apologize to leonardo santos um he's been around forever long career kind of dwindled his career down by injuries unfortunate situations arise like that um he is the underdog here at a plus 190 has had a really good ufc career but he's older now 43 i believe grant dawson the minus 210 i like grant all day grant grant's younger he's got a skill set that would give leonardo santos problems um, even it's prime granted Dawson still young and on the ground maybe Santos could catch him in something you know I just think unlikely I like Dawson here but I do like a decision for Dawson because Santos he's gonna be game he's definitely game but I don't know if he's that next level at least not anymore but I do think at one point he was a pretty high level fighter 
Um, we just really never got to see how far he could take it. But I do think he loses to Grant Dawson here in this matchup. But you could prove us all wrong and, and show 43 age doesn't matter. Next fight, Macy Chiasson takes on Marian Renau. I really like Chiasson to win here. I know some people really feel Renau has a chance. He's got a lot of experience. But older girl hasn't looked great as of late. She has on the minus 215. Renau, the plus 195. If you want a live dog, I would say she might be one. Uh, this is for Renau. She's got a lot more experience. But it's hard to pick against a young she has on. Good skill set. And I think she can beat Renau on a close decision here. I think that uh, she's she's got the tools to do so. And, and I'm going to ride a she has on victory by a close decision in this matchup. Now, the next fight of the night... This one's going to be fun. Tai Tuivasa versus Harry Hunsucker. Tuivasa originally scheduled to fight Dante Mays. I thought that was going to be an entertaining fight. This is another good matchup. Striker, who's going to be looking for the knockout, but does have decent grappling. But I think this is primarily a striking match. I think this is going to be a good showing for Tai Tuivasa. I think this is going to rise his momentum a bit. I don't know about his stock, but this will put him on a two-fight win streak. Not as high level a fighter as Harry Hunter. Not that he's not high level. He's good. He's got a pretty solid record. We've seven and three. But he's taken on Tai Tuivasa, who's been in there with a who's who. This is more of a tune-up now. It's a short notice replacement. I think Ty's going to come out looking good. Gets the knockout in the first round. And uh, definitely brings momentum more so into 2021. Because I, I think he'll score himself a solid fight. You know, if he continues these wins, he's a popular guy and he's a likable guy. And he does have a good skill set. Just had a recent setback, but he's, you know, came back from that three-fight losing streak and beat Stefan Struve. Odds, widespread as you can get. Plus 400, minus 450. I like a knockout here. I believe you're not going to like the props, though. They're not really worth playing. Under one and a half is a minus 225. I think it's likely, but at minus 225, I don't like it. Or well, under two and a half, I would say... Another one, don't like it. It's very likely, but I don't like it at minus 470 at all. If I goes the distance at a plus 450, extremely unlikely. But if it did happen, uh, somebody would be like a Mystic Mac. But I'm not, I'm not predicting that. I think it's a knockout. We can look at Tai Tuivasa winning by KO. It's minus 265. I'm not liking any of these prop bets. Tai by submission is the only one, but I don't think that happens. Hunsucker is pretty good on the ground. And we know Ty is primarily a knockout artist. Ty Tuivasa, he wins. You want to place a bet on him? You got the money to, to throw in at minus 450? Go for it. I think it's very likely he gets it done. Personally, wouldn't do so. But I do think he wins. Knockout. Round one. Next fight, Max Griffin. Song Kanan. Song's got some power in his hands. And he's pretty good. Gas tank's questionable. Max Griffin is not questionable with his gas tank. Win over Mike Perry. Pretty good kickboxer, unorthodox, tricky style. You know, he's an awkward guy. And Song Kanan, pretty good technical kickboxer. But I think Max Griffin, he, he could really give him problems here. Um, I think it's competitive, this fight. I think a Griffin decision is likely in this matchup. Could also see a Song knockout early. But Griffin's not an easy guy to put away. He's very durable. Odds for this fight, Max Griffin at the minus 200, Sunken on at the plus 185. He's a live dog. Sunken on's got power. But I think Griffin's just too versatile, too. There's dimensions of striking. And I think Griffin, just on another level, his movement and range management is going to be too much for Kanan, um, who is a big puncher. You can look at the prop bet on that one. Let's see. Under one and a half, unlikely. Fight goes the distance is a minus 170. So people are seeing this fight potentially going the distance. Griffin by a TKO is extremely unlikely and as big of a favorite as he is. It seems like, uh, yeah, Griffin by a decision is a plus 105. So not great odds there. Minus 135 for Griffin, not by decision. I think it's unlikely. I think a decision win at a plus 105. I personally am not playing. Not enough upside to take that risk. But I do think he gets a decision because Kanan... Definitely durable and very game. Next fight of the night. Adrian Yanez and Gustavo Lopez. This fight was really hard for me to pick. I like both guys. They're fun to watch. Yanez, Dana White's Contender Series alumni. And I enjoyed his fight. I liked his story. And I became a fan of him. But I think Gustavo Lopez is a really tricky fight for him. 
Good grappling, pressure fighter, a lot of high level experience. This is a stern test for Adrian Yanez. I think it's maybe a toss up here. I originally picked Lopez to win this fight. I don't know, something in me is slightly shifting towards Yanez. So I may be flip flopping on this one. We'll quickly look at the lines. Yanez at a minus 220, Gustavo Lopez at a plus 200. They've spread. Yanez, high likelihood. I, I think the kid's got something special, I'll be honest. And I did think Gustavo Lopez pressure could overwhelm him. I still think it's possible. But I could see Yanez piecing him up and getting a knockout. Because the striking skills for Yanez are a different level here than Gustavo Lopez. Pressure fighting and grappling, Lopez is nasty. But Yanez, his kickboxing's high level. And it is going to be difficult to deal with, especially how good shape he looked in as well. Yanez winning by a TKO plus 110. I think of Giannis TKO here. See in the first round. Giannis wins around one plus two fifty. See. Giannis by TKO in the first, plus three twenty-five. If you really want to play the mystic Mac, I mean Giannis is a knockout artist. Personally, risky. Wouldn't do it unless I was feeling crazy that day, but not gonna do it today. But still thinking of Giannis win here. It's a tricky fight though. Gustavo Lopez is really game, so I don't know. It's, it's tricky. I've picked Lopez early in the week, starting to feel a shift to Yanez. It's a 50-50 fight. I'm leaning Yanez, though, right now, as of now. But that could change as soon as I see them walk into the octagon. But I still think Yanez, high likelihood he gets it done here. Next fight is Cheyenne Baez versus Montserrat Ruiz. Savage for stepping up and savage tattoos. Montserrat Ruiz, she looks like an animal and she fights good, man. She's a good shape, girl. Very broad. I love the ink. She looks she looks game. She's going to be tricky. She's a girl that's she's coming to win. She's not here to take a paycheck. She's game. She's been wanting to come to the UFC for a while now. Good skill set. I think she's going to give Baez work, but I do think Baez probably gets a decision not over her. But I think Ruiz, definitely better performance than people would probably expect. I mean, if you don't know her, and especially the odds right now, minus 305 to plus 275. They're not expecting much from Ruiz, but I think she's going to go out there and put a performance on. Let's see what the props are for this fight. Because if we could maybe get fight goes decision is minus 225. Let's see if we could get a buys win by decision here. Minus 120. Not loving that. Ruiz by decision plus 480. Could happen. I'm picking buys, but Ruiz's game. Probably skip the bet on that one, especially at the minus 305. Not any good prop bets, really. Uh, I don't know. I, I think Ruiz is going to give her work. Buys still young and developing. But still, I think buys does get by decision next fight brad riddell gregor gillespie this is a fun fight gillespie's nasty he's a serious prospect he was knocked out by kevin lee it was a head kick he went to sleep he seems to be fine with it. he seems to have mentally recovered from it i think he's gonna come back and come back with a vengeance his grappling is gonna give brad riddell hell and i think we're gonna see gregor gillespie put him on his back Hold him down, control him, and beat him up. And I think Gillespie, a dominant decision here. If Riddell stops to take down and work some nasty kickboxing because he can kickbox, he's, he's nasty on the feet, you could knock out Gregor Gillespie. But I just don't see him stopping the takedown. If he does, great work to him. And I'd be very impressed because I think he's a really good kickboxer. He's a fun guy to watch. Gillespie's nasty on the ground. So I'm riding a Gillespie win here. I think a decision is pretty likely and a lot of top control from Gregor Gillespie, who's a very dangerous wrestler. As far as the odds for this fight, Plus 225 is Brad Riddell, the dog. Gregor Gillespie, the minus 245 favorite. It's just the styles make fight. Grappler versus striker. And I just think the takedown defense of Riddell, I don't think it's at the level where you're going to stop all of Gregor Gillespie's takedowns. He's not going to stop after one attempt at getting sprawled. It's going to be continuous. And he's going to overwhelm Brad Riddell with the wrestling skills. So I'm running Gillespie here in this matchup. And now we get to the co-main event. Kevin Holland, he takes on Derek Brunson. I think this is an awesome fight. I'm pumped to see it. It was intense. It was a bit of love at the end there. Kevin Holland's a character. I'm a fan. I think Kevin Holland is good for the sport. He's a charismatic guy. I think he's got star potential. I think also he's a great fighter. Awesome kickboxer. Very dangerous off his back. Power off his back. 
That's a dangerous skill. You can be on top and he can still knock you out. Kevin Holland is dangerous. He's lanky, 81 inch reach, six foot three. He beats Derek Brunson inside of three. I could see it inside of one. He's gonna knock out Derek Brunson here. Brunson's dangerous, good kickboxing, very good wrestling. I think Holland's jiu-jitsu neutralizes the wrestling. The attack from the bottom is going to give Brunson work. And we've seen Brunson knocked out before. I think Holland, inside of three rounds, is likely here for this matchup. He's a minus 167 favorite. Brunson, the plus 157. Let's look down here. Okay, so over one and a half is a minus 195. Under one and a half is a plus 168. I don't know. Under one and a half and under two and a half. I like both of those. It's possible. I would say under three and a half, very likely. I'm, I'm feeling like it's likely to be under three and a half because I said under three is my pick. Um, as far as going the distance, it could happen. And I think Holland and Brunson are both ready for it, but less than likely. I, I, especially if Brunson starts fast, he's going to not be... Put, potentially not be um, fit enough to go five rounds at that high pace. I don't know. I, I don't think he would. He's going to probably have to pace himself if he does plan on trying to take this fight to the distance if he comes in with more of that type of game plan to control, try to score points. It could happen. Brunson could come out with a whole different game plan, but normally he's a guy that's going to go for the kill or at least make it a damn dog fight like we saw against Edmund Shabazi, and then he knocked him out bad. Brunson by a TKO plus 480. Holland by a TKO at plus 150, I like. I like that. Holland submission plus 700. Very unlikely, but could happen. Crazier things have happened. Holland inside the distance plus 105. Safe, I would say. Very possible. I like the Holland by TKO at plus 150. If you need to play a prop bet and you want to play a little bit safer, a Holland TKO, or just inside the distance by Holland. But prop bets, high risk, high reward. Up to you if you want to play them. The basic odds here are not terrible at a minus 167. I have, Kevin Holland's the guy. He's getting it done. I have him winning this fight. It's going to be an epic performance. Fun main event. I'm excited to see it. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Follow my social media, Instagram, Twitter. Also made an MMA experts TikTok. We'll link that in the description as well. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Thank you all so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.